afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Andrea Kyer, and I have the honor and privilege of being your MC for today's program. On this occasion that was started uh, in earnest nearly three years ago, so welcome, everyone. I want to just quote one of our committee members who said, uh, this project is the essence of Minnesota culture. You take an idea, bring it to the community, and the community makes it a reality. And today is that day. So get, getting started, I'd like to introduce our first two speakers, the co-chairs of this tribute, Dr. Josie Johnson, an educator, civil rights activist, and former regent at the University of Minnesota. And joining her is Dr. Retha Clark King. She's the former chair and president of the General Mills Foundation and vice president of General Mills. Retha and Josie. Good afternoon. Thank you, Andrea. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I had to put a word here, the word happy, because I'm going to say on behalf of our steering committee, I thank you all for attending this historic and happy event. That's, that's my, my word to express my emotions and the emotions of our committee. We thank you for your interest and for your encouragement. You honor us with your presence and with your support. It is my special privilege to serve with Dr. Josie Johnson as co-chair of our outstanding, hardworking steering committee. Dr. Johnson and I thank them. We thank you for helping us accomplish our goal to create and mount this bronze bust to honor our esteemed former mayor, Sharon Sales Belton. Today, we congratulate Mayor Sales Belton and her family. <laughs> We working mothers have to get the family part in it. <laughs> and we can all understand there were numerous partners who had critical roles to accomplish the needed task. A very critical partner and key step in the process was the approval by the Minneapolis Building Commission. The commission granted its approval and gave us the go-ahead last July 2016, as has been mentioned. I don't think the commission ever realized how nervous we were uh, making the request to them uh, as we waited for them to deliberate. Today, we thank them for their enthusiasm about the project and their confidence in our committee. Next, I invite us to thank the visionary behind the whole endeavor. Our work proved Dr. Margaret Mead, the famous anthropologist, right when she said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. But we must remember that it takes a visionary to have the idea and to bring together the group to help make the idea happen to benefit others. Phyllis Goff was our founder, visionary creator for this project. Phyllis, we thank you. We thank you for everything. Phyllis has a way of trying to dodge praise, so she's kept us safe. We all thank our awesome committee. After gaining approval from the commission, our committee put its heart and soul into this project. I have served on many local and national committees, but this was one of the smartest and hardest working I have ever experienced. We brought to the table the four T's, time, talent, treasure, and testimony to accomplish this project. We were a highly intentional group. 
we were greatly inspired to get in place this special tribute to honor the leadership and accomplishments of our esteemed uh, Mayor Sharon Sales Belton. The Tribute Steering Committee is so grateful for the general support of the public as well. Those of you in the audience, uh, many of you contributed also the four T's as well, time, talent, finances, and encouragement. There's still an opportunity to help. In case you are wondering what's next, uh, you can contribute in support of another endeavor which we are all excited about. And this is an educational symposium developed by Dr. Sam Myers and Dr. John Wright uh, in, Sharon, in Mayor Sales Belton's honor at the Humphrey Institute in the fall. We plan then to connect more with youth and young professionals to inspire them with Mayor Sales Belton's leadership and accomplishment. The fall symposium will provide an opportunity for us to begin this work. As I transition to my esteemed co-chair, Josie, uh, I want to acknowledge that amongst us we have any number of special reasons why this project is so special and so dear to us. We encourage you to think of your own reasons and rejoice. Uh, I have four reasons and I get up each morning with another reason, <laughs> thinking about this project. As co-chair of the committee, the project is always on your mind. Uh, for those of you who travel a great distance to be here today, uh, I know you must have had a motivation for coming, for making the sacrifice. We invite you to enjoy that motivation. Uh, for myself, who grew up worshiping role models because they showed me how to break the barriers of discrimination in South Georgia, I wake up some mornings thinking about the sacred reasons why this project is so important to me. Um, I left Georgia 1954, graduate of high school, and all I wanted to do was to go north uh, because my teachers told me I could be a chemist like George Washington Carver. They, and I thought that, I believed that. They never told me the other barriers that were going to come later. Uh, the women, the gender barrier. I honor you today mounted both discrimination and gender. <laughs> the race and the gender barrier. Uh, so I believe in role models, and we're going to present this notion to our young people as well. We are honoring today our sense of community. It reminds me of how our honoree reflected the spirit of respect for each other and collaboration in communities, and she inspired communities to come together and accomplish little and big things to benefit the common good. I love those terms, the common good. Uh, and lastly, I encourage you again to find your own reasons and enjoy this wonderful time in history. And now, my fellow co-chair, the esteemed uh, Dr. Josie Robinson Johnson. <laughs> Thank you sincerely, Rita, and good day to all of you who have gathered with us to honor our honorable mayor, Sharon Sells Belton. Mayor, your service to Minneapolis and the desire to recognize you in a very special way brought together a group of exceptional citizens. This group of citizens was excited and eager to honor your history of service to this city and beyond. You brought to your role as the first African-American and first woman mayor 
your African American ancestry, its culture, and your strength and grit and determination. You brought the history and value of listening and learning from others. You brought a commitment to the task before you. And Mayor, you had many tasks in front of you. Your culture of strong work habits, kinship bond, religious orientation, and memory of all of your previous experiences helped you to develop strategies to address the task before you. Mayor, you were able to use your formal and informal support network. And that network, formal and informal, helped you get things done. You understood and strengthened your knowledge about available resources and services and made the system work for your city. Your values and belief helped you understand the impact of poverty on education, on self-esteem, and the quality of life. Your ancestral values and beliefs contributed to your deep respect for the wisdom of seniors and their needs. You deeply, your deeply etched ancestral instinct and struggle for justice and fairness kept the big picture of management of your city in front of you at all times. You reached out to others and with respect and collaboration, you listened, you learned, and you acted. You made us a model city, Sharon, and we are the benefactors of your history, your values, your gifts, your determination, and your deep appreciation of all that you are and have ever been. Our children will learn those values you have demonstrated in so many ways and they will know the value of hard work and determination. And they will know that those qualities matter. It has been an honor to be a part of the recognition of your service to all of us. Thank you, Mayor, and we're grateful to you. And now, the mayor of Minneapolis, Mayor Betsy Hodges. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Mayor Selzbaum, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and can we just give a round of applause to Dr. Johnson? And for making today possible. Uh, it's an honor for me to be part of it, and here's why. Um, when I walk down the hallway toward the mayor's office from here, there's that entire line of photos of all the mayors of Minneapolis. And I am not the only woman whose photo is on the wall. I know, I 
know, Mayor, that when you uh, when you are in office, you face some issues that I can't even fathom, the, the depth of them that you face, some of the public safety issues you face, uh, the, the renaissance of growth in the city that you uh, helped bring, helped vision, and helped shepherd through. Um, you know, those big picture things are things that I think we all know were incredibly important to you and issues that you faced. And some of the days you must have had on the job, I can, I can imagine a little bit but I cannot imagine for But I also know you are dedicated to a city that is just run very well, that utility billing was something that you were interested in. <laughs> you knew that that had to go right for the city, for the city to go right. You knew that yes, public safety is a basic service, but so is water, and making sure that we have clean water coming out of our taps to this day, thank you. I have now sat in your chair. There's only a few of us who have. I see Mayor Fraser is here. I know that you know that you are here. There's only a few handfuls of us around now who have sat in that chair. And so as we unveil of us today, that is a dedication and a monument to you and your vision and your work. <coughs> having sat in that chair, having a picture of what you face. We now have a picture, too, of some of the headwinds that you faced, some of the things that you faced as an African-American mayor, as a woman mayor, any mayor would face, but that added extra headwinds for you, and I know a little bit about that. So this isn't just a monument to the good work that you did or how influential you've been in our entire community. It's also a monument to your persistence, to your strength, to your vision, to your refusal to do anything less than your best and the city's best for this city and this country and this state. And it's a monument to who you are as a person. As strong as this as this metal is, as strong as this this bus is, it is not as strong as you. Yeah. <laughs> It will be here for generations, and so will your impact on our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Rifa and Josie. Your leadership, we're eternally grateful for your unselfish contributions. But now I'd like to turn it over to someone that probably, aside from Stephen maybe, that knows Sharon just as well, or maybe more, and that would be Sharon's sister, Renee Sales. Thank you, Andrea. My name is Renee Sells, and you have Sharon's bio of, of some facts in front of you, but I would like to talk about my sister, my friend. We come from a long line of Sales family women. Our father had six sisters, and there are five of us. Our elders have always reminded us that the Sales sisters are a loyal, spiritual, and united force. To that regard, our sister Sharon is a force by herself. I have been blessed to accompany Sharon to many incredible events where she shared inspiring words and her vision for a better world, a better life for all of us. Sharon takes every opportunity to counsel and encourage emerging leaders to follow their passion and make a difference. It is a blessing to have her as our sister. Our entire family, family acknowledges Sharon's gifts to her constituents and the city of Minneapolis. We all need a light to follow, and Sharon continues to be a beacon for our community. Thank you. Now it's my privilege to introduce Ed Dwight. Ed has had a distinguished career as an aeronautical engineer. He was selected by the Kennedy administration as the first African-American astronaut candidate in space program. 
But lucky for us, in 1974, he followed his passion in art, and in, he declared himself a sculptor in 1974, and he's done fine works and memorials, including those of Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King, and he is joining us today. Okay? Well, I want to express my deep, deep, deep appreciation for all of you folks that came out today. Uh, 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 this is my 129th unveiling. Can you pull your mic up? Yeah, uh, yeah. This, uh, uh, this is my 129th unveiling. Uh, but this is an unveiling. <laughs> uh, and this unveiling shows a ton and tons and tons of love. Uh, there's a few people I need to thank for this, and, and, and Phyllis Goff uh, is high on the list because he's the one that brought me into this. Uh, I, I want to thank the, the steering committee and Dr. King and, and, and uh, Dr. Johnson, who, whose boss, back in 1974, talked me out of doing what I was doing and becoming a sculptor. Uh, he ended up telling me that uh, uh, Ed, he called me into his office and he says, Ed, he says, uh, uh, I, I had a big construction company and I was welding nails together uh, from junk at the end of each day. I'd go get all the junk and bring it to my house and my garage and I'd weld it together. Uh, George came over to an art show that I had there with all these little nails and he calls me into his office and he says, Ed, uh, I want you to do a sculpture of me for the state capitol building. And I said, George, I'd make a fool out of both you and me because I just weld nails together. <laughs> and he says, you're gonna do this because you're gonna stop making all that money because I was building high rise buildings and stuff. Uh, and, and you're gonna tell the story of, of uh, African Americans in this country and their contribution. My problem was I went to white schools all the way and, and I, I, drew, I asked, I said, George, what did black people do? I swear to God, I said that. And, and he looked at me and he says, have you ever heard of Harriet Tubman? And I said, what did she do? Uh, George Washington Carver, what did he do? Uh, and, and he called me a pitiful word that I can't, <laughs> 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 you know, that I can't see here. And he called me back to his office and he had two stacks of books. And I didn't even know that was slavery, I swear to God. And, and, and I read these books and I was very, 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 very upset because all this time I had gone and got this education and the president had appointed me to be an astronaut and I got all this stuff flying around and, and I had no idea and I was incredibly disappointed that I had been robbed of all this incredible history. Uh, and so he says, your job now Ed, is to bring black images uh, to the landscape of America. Because we have, if somebody came down here from Mars and all the people were gone, and they went to the museums and the galleries, they would think black people did not exist on this planet. And so as a result of this, this has been an incredible journey for me and a very exciting journey for me. And my biggest frustration after reading uh, Sharon Sales Belton's body of work, I envisioned this 14 foot tall sculpture of her <laughs> sitting out in the city square. <laughs> yeah. but, but we got we to gotta start uh, and do what we got to do. Uh, we, we, we've broken the barrier here, but Sharon has a lot more to come. <laughs> So, so anyway, thank you for having me here. I've, I, you know, I've really over, overdone my time, but, uh, but uh, you know, the committee that, uh, that, 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 that went along with, uh, with Phyllis and uh, 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 Kathleen O'Brien, who help, helped uh, do some things, uh, Twin Cities Tile, who, who got the granite and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things that go into the making of, uh, of a memorial. And, and so, and all those people contribute, and and it's, and you, we we got to say thank you to all those as well. And Sharon, your star. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ed.
Um, I know we're all waiting for the unveiling, but I just want to mention two other things that we do have a lovely letter uh, from Senator Amy Klobuchar that was sent in today, as well as it's been proclaimed Sharon Sales Belton Day by the Governor Dayton of the state of Minnesota. So congratulations. So now I would like to ask uh, Mayor Belton, Sales Belton, Ed and Phyllis Goff to <laughs> unveil the statue. The bust, I should say. The statue. The statue. <laughs> to the folks that are way up there, Tammy and Kathleen, I see you guys. Um, thank you all for coming. This is just a, um, as I said, I'm speechless. But because I knew I would be, I actually wrote remarks. <laughs> and before I give them, I just wanted to acknowledge all the members of my family uh, that are here. My Aunt Juanita uh, is uh, here. She's the matriarch of our family. She was also my first campaign treasurer. The second treasurer is here too, I see him. And my husband, Stephen, Jordan, and Coleman, Antoinette. Kailena, our daughter, is not with us today, but she's with us with, in spirit. And I've just had a host of cousins and aunts and would-be cousins. And you know, we're all here as a family, and I'm just so grateful that you all have come out tonight. I want to begin first by thanking the members of the uh, Bronx Committee. It's really hard to find words to convey uh, my full appreciation for your efforts. Many of you have been my partners and allies over the years, and I actually owe you a debt of uh, personal gratitude. You've worked with me when I was on the city council, when I was the mayor, and to see you be a part of the, this effort is really um, touching. So thank you so much uh, for uh, your work. If you don't know who the committee members uh, are, I do want you to know that they're all wearing uh, rose corsages. They didn't want to, but I got them anyway, and so that people would know who they are. So again, I just want to thank you personally, and I want everybody to know the role that you played in making today possible. Would you all join me in a round of applause for these individuals? No, they didn't have to do this. They have other things to do. <laughs> now, I have to also offer a couple of words of special uh, thanks. I think they're in order uh, this evening. First, a very special thanks to committee co-chair, Dr. Retha Clark King. Now, I want to just tell you why um, this is so moving for me to have her be a part of this. I first met, first met Dr. King when she was appointed to serve as the president of Metro State University. And she may not remember that first meeting, but we came over to talk to her about helping other women have the opportunity to get their education uh, at Metro State. She was excited and open uh, to find ways to make sure that that was possible, and she delivered on that promise. So thank you, Dr. King. I also had the privilege of working with her as she served as the uh, president of the General Mills Foundation, and she was an extraordinary leader. I'm going to say a little bit more about that in just a hot minute, but I do want you to know that when I needed help, she was there to offer help. When I needed advice, she was there to give it. When I needed correction, she was there to offer it. She was there to support me in my endeavors, and for that I am absolutely grateful. And now to the other co-chair, Dr. Josie Johnson. 
I just have to tell you, this is a little bit super special for me to make these following remarks. Josie has been a mentor and a role model to me since I was 19 years old. I didn't have any business being on the north side at 19 years old, and she probably knew that, and she provided me with guidance and counsel about how to find my way back. <laughs> Wasn't that I was doing anything wrong? <laughs> But she had my back. So I want to say a special thank you to Mama Josie for caring for me and for caring for so many children in our village. There are a lot of us in this room who have been nurtured and supported by you over the years. And we are grateful for your leadership and for your guidance and for your encouragement. <laughs> One thing I'll tell you about Dr. Josie Johnson is that she holds old school. So that means that you know she will call you into the office at a drop of a hat in a moment's notice. And I have been in her office too. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you something about these two women and as well all of the members of the committee. Every one of us, every one of them, and I haven't given you all their names, but we are all united. We have always been united in our shared passion for education the power of the arts to change lives and lift spirits, and the importance, the critical importance of civic engagement. And it's those things that have bind us all together over all of these years. Now, what can I say about my friend, Phyllis Goff? <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> what can I say about Phyllis? Phyllis, what I want to say to you tonight is that your work has been nothing short of extraordinary. Absolutely. Nothing short of extraordinary. <laughs> you pulled the committee together, and I will acknowledge that that wasn't hard. These are people who really wanted to come together and work. But from the very beginning, you were the driving force around this initiative, and it never, ever would have happened without your push and pull. Thank you so very, very much. Now, I don't know how many of you know much about Phyllis's background, but I'm going to tell you something. It's really clear to me and hopefully to all of you who know uh, something about Phyllis's work and why, and why she's the chair of this State Historical Society. Is, and that is because Phyllis has been and will continue to work hard for all of our stories to be told for all of our stories to be chronicled so that we all know our history. We all know the contributions of the leaders of our community, and we can all take pride in that. So Phyllis, thank you uh, for your leadership, and thank you for ensuring that our history, our collective history, will be chronicled for further generations. Now, I wanted to say something about this bust. I did not know, I had not really seen the finished product, so I didn't know what's going to happen when we pulled the veil down. <laughs> now, I know that the sculptor has a wonderful history, and I knew that he was going to do justice to all those photos he had. But this is a magnificent uh, piece of work, and uh, I am absolutely delighted by it. But I also want to say that this bust is of me, but this is about all of us. The story behind the bust is partially my story, but it is also our story. It never would have happened unless we had all come together as a community. Let me explain that just a little bit further. It was our collective commitment to address gender discrimination and racial discrimination in a very forceful way, in a very smart and strategic way that helped me to get elected the mayor of the city of This was not just about me. It was our shared vision for the city that laid the foundation for our city's prosperity. Again, we made investments, you know, with the idea and notion that we were going to pay it forward. Our plan, our plan to your point, uh, Ritho, was to make strategic investments to take responsible 
an informed risk, because you gotta take risk, to ask the right questions and sometimes tough questions and be prepared to face adversity head on. You can't run away from your problems. They will chase you and track you down. We focused more on getting the job done rather than worrying about who got the credit. I really never cared about who got the credit. If you want to take credit for my work, go right ahead. We know how to get the job done, and we leaned in, and we leaned in hard, and we got it done. We assembled a winning team that sought to earn the public's trust and then to preserve it going forward. Our partners, our partners included sage elected and appointed officials, many of them are in this room, captains of industry who are both men and women, philanthropists, academicians, there are some in this room, faith leaders, there are many in this room, advocates, activists, and even the lady next door and our city's youth. All of them, all of us, Democrats and Republicans, we were all invited to the table to chart a new course for our city, for our residents, and our future. So to all of you who are a part of that story, this story, this bust, and all that is behind it, today, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So let me conclude by making just two more not confessions, but statements. My family, Josie and both Aretha talked about this. My family taught me the importance of community. They impressed upon me that there is no room on the sidelines. Sidelines are taken up with people who just want to observe. You got to get in the game. They inspired me to believe in myself and to see the good in the world. And you know what? The good is always there. Sometimes it's hiding under a rock. Sometimes it's behind a tree. Or it's in a hardened heart or a dampened spirit. But the good is there, and it is our job to find the good. We worked hard to find that good. Mayor Hodges, and I know we haven't heard from County Board Chair uh, Callison, I do want to say that I thank you. I thank you for allowing the citizens of our community to tell our story through the placement of this bust in City Hall. I hope the bust will serve as a reminder that a vision can become a reality. And when we work together, we get more things done than when we work alone. We are, in fact, the stewards of the public's trust. And it is our responsibility to partner with our citizens always to improve the lives of all of the people. Thank you so much. Chair of the County Board and represents District 6. Yeah. Good, afternoon. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. What a wonderful turnout. What a wonderful tribute. And what a wonderful statue or bust. I can see Sharon exactly with her, <laughs> with her head high and a smile on her face. It's captured her personality to a T. Congratulations. Aretha said there was some uncertainty about whether the Municipal Building Commission would accept this honor. There was no uncertainty. <laughs> this was the right thing, and those of us on the Municipal Building Commission were happy to be in position of saying yes. If you're not sure about the Municipal Building Commission, that is the four people, the four-person organization that runs, if you will, this, this um, institution. 
Sharon served on it when she was mayor of Minneapolis. Commissioner McLaughlin cannot be here today, but he's part of it and he sends his regrets. And I want to acknowledge um, Commissioner Higgins, who also is present. I am always reminded of the times I served as the mayor of Minnetonka. Heart, people are excited and ready to go. <laughs> But when we recognize service of the city of Minnetonka, there's a little phrase we use in the statue that we present, and it says, our community reflects the character and dedication of those who serve it. And the longer I'm in public service, the more I think there's a corollary to that. And that is that the person comes to reflect the community as well. And today, we are about the special relationship between an elected official and a city, between Sharon and the city of Minneapolis. And you've heard the many ways in which she shaped Minneapolis, whether it's the buildings, the population, the character of the city itself, the fact that we all can see ourselves now in the Minneapolis City Council. But I believe Minneapolis also shaped Sharon. Not that she wasn't perfect to start with. <laughs> but if you've seen her chair a meeting, you know this is a woman who's used to chairing meetings, who knows how to ask questions. If you've seen her advocate for the people in her community, you know that she's also experienced the, the hopes and dreams of those folks. And I think if you have ever been in public service, you recognize the low moments, and I'm sure Sharon had those low moments. And she knew her community would pick her up and support her. So it's our pleasure today to accept this gift, to know that people will walk down this corridor and see these three leaders, and that they will know how much Sharon has meant to the community and how much the community has meant to Sharon. So thank you for including me, and thanks for having me.